So that's your top effort. Really. As we continue that morning watching the wildebeest, we soon learn we weren't the only ones. This young male lion overlooked the situation at hand. He wasn't alone, as other pride members also watched on as the wildebeest strolled by. Even as their prey was near, it seemed these lions looked more content just to socialize. While well, not all were content with just hanging out, this youngster probably didn't get enough food at the last kill, and it had other plans in mind than just lying around. The long line of wildebeest became more alert as some hyenas strolled past them, but it seemed this clan was more concerned with grouping up and possibly heading off to rest. Our line was still at it, trying to check out which wildebeest would be the one to take down. As it looked over the herd, I looked over the pride using this chance to get some close-up shots. With the landscape being so flat, the line gave up on trying to stalk to its prey. But it still was trying and it looked back at its pride for a little help. Uh, nope. I guess I'll do this alone then. With just one lion hunting and in the light of day, its success rate was well under 20%. They increased that rate by hunting in the evening, as the prey can't see as well as they can at night. These prey animals here had no problem seeing this lion. As it walked on, a lot of wildebeest stood back to be able to keep an eye on this predator. The experienced wildebeest were well aware of how close they could let this line get before they would have to run away. Meanwhile, back at the Pride, the group seemed slightly interested in how the hunt was going. Only slightly. The lion kept moving forward, possibly waiting for a young wildebeest to run by. But none came, so it looked slightly unsure of what to do out there. You know, some of the pride was criticizing its every move. The lion slowly walked back, most likely wondering why no one came to help. Speaking of slow, as we drove off, we spotted this leopard tortoise. I hoped that seeing a leopard up in a tree would soon happen on our search for Chewy. These birds were having no problem seeing the flying insects around our jeep that made for a good meal. I just wish one would come to me to eat these flies off my face. As the heat started to rise, we saw another cory bustard walking around. And I had to act quick to get a photo of this shy eland. As we turned around, we saw something go right past our jeep. No, not the other jeep, but that cheetah in front of it. Even though we were looking for leopard, I would have no problem stopping to enjoy these cheetahs for a while. It seemed we weren't alone as this jeep had a film crew inside it. As they adjusted their expensive equipment, I didn't have the heart to tell them that the cheetah just moved around them and were right beside them. I'm sure they got a kick out of the fact that after putting a zoom lens on that could reach the moon, these cats walked just within feet of their jeep. From far away we spotted an animal that we hadn't seen yet on the safari, a hartebeest. This large antelope can weigh between 300 to over 400 pounds and stand well over 3 feet at the shoulder. They have been wiped out in former ranges like Egypt and Libya due to overhunting. Males and females will have horns. And as we drove back towards camp, we learned we weren't through with the predators yet as we came across some more hyena. With all the wildebeest around, it was an easy meal whenever they wanted to go out for it. Especially with newborn wildebeest like this one. A herd will try hard to stand around and hide its young. These two hyena looked like they were just trying to get some rest after a long night. Speaking of rest, it was now time to go back to our tent to rest up a few hours before a long evening drive. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Safari Tanzania. For more information on the items featured in this video, please read this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching.